Strategy Guide. We are so honored to have made it through a third season with our fans. Uh, we hope that your fantasy season went well, and we certainly hope that you brought home a couple of championships or at least finished in the top three. One of the things that we've been doing over the past couple of years is that we have worked to have sort of an end of season podcast and that's what we are here to do today we are here with three of the mainstays for the season from the fantasy football strategy guide first off let's say hello to dylan kleintop dylan welcome back to the show thank you for having me i love being here and one of the things about dylan is dylan has graduated and has uh, remained a part of this podcast and, and we appreciate his time here also being joined by nightly news former president and still current club member brian christiana brian welcome back to the show it's great to be with my friends here tyler dylan you professor miller thank you again of course and uh, always appreciate your fantasy insight uh sure that you were were happy to see the ravens check out of the playoffs uh, recently yes sir <laughs> As, mike yo can we just talk about mike mccarthy looking like uh chris farley he looked like chris farley in his press conference <laughs> oh, oh. all right and we're also being joined by new nightly news co-president tyler coleman tyler welcome back to the show yeah, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure being on. Always one of the most interesting follows on Twitter, especially if you are interested in Atlanta Braves baseball. Um, not very happy that Josh Donaldson did not sign with the Braves and decided to go with the Twins. Heels underscore R underscore better on Twitter for Tyler Coleman. So if you if you like keeping up with with uh, WWE and Atlanta Braves baseball and really Kansas City Chiefs, a variety of other things, make sure you give him a follow. Hey, speaking of WWE, Elimination Chamber in Philly. It's March be a good, looking forward to. We're going. We're going. Uh, we're going to sit in a box suite. All right. Well, we are here to wrap up the fantasy football season, and we are here for our fantasy football awards show. Today, we're going to take a look at the best of each position, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. We're going to take a look at the best draft value, the comeback player of the year, and the fantasy MVP. We'll end the show by taking a look ahead to the way too early fantasy football top 20 overall players for 2020. Uh, before we get into this, uh, one thing that I've actually been very interested in is the upcoming XFL. You know what's very interesting, gentlemen? No website at this point has developed any type of fantasy XFL, and I would love for that to happen. Um, DraftKings is talking about maybe doing a DFS XFL fantasy, but ESPN, there's no mention of it whatsoever, which I found odd because... Some of the games are going to be on ESPN. And the thing also, WWE is so tied in with ESPN, Vince McMahon. Their relationship is, like, huge right now. So Yeah, so I'm, I'm interested, in, and I want to keep my eyes out for that. But we are going to talk today about um, give our fantasy awards. So, gentlemen, I think what better place to start than the best quarterback of 2019. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to go around the room, and I want to hear everyone's best quarterback for 2019 and some of these we might agree on and some of them we may not and that's kind of where I want to focus this so we'll start off with Tyler Tyler let's hear your best quarterback of 2019 so for the quarterback not the MVP I decided to go with Patrick Mahomes just because you're a Chiefs fan I am but yeah I know he was injured for a few games earlier in the year but I'm almost positive he threw for like almost 4000 yards and he only had like five interceptions on the course of the season so 4031 yards five interceptions yeah. just as you mentioned so he was you know he was able to help lead the team to some tough victories at the end of the season, which helped the team clinch the number two seed in the AFC Championship. So, well, and certainly, if you anytime you look back at the playoffs and what he did against um, the Texans, I mean, you guys all watched that game. I mean, that was literally one of the craziest games that I've ever seen in my entire life. And what he did to come back, some of the passes that he made, uh, I, I guess that's hard to argue going forward. I think what might hold him back a little bit is those two missed games that he had. But still, I, I, you could certainly do worse than Mahomes. Though, a season long, he was the seventh ranked quarterback in fantasy. All right, Dylan, let's hear what your thoughts are on the quarterback of the year. 
All right, so for my quarterback, um, I was stuck between two. Um, obviously, you have Lamar Jackson. He was one of my picks. But then my other pick was Russell Wilson. Um, you can't argue Russell. If it wasn't for Lamar Jackson's crazy year this year, Russell would definitely be an MVP contender. He was for a while until Lamar turned it up. In my opinion, Russell Wilson is one of the most solid, if not one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And interesting about Russell Wilson, and to your point, Dylan, earlier in the season, we were having, it was it was who's better, Lamar Jackson, Russell Wilson, and I think, you know, the first 10 weeks, I don't think there's any question that Russell Wilson was, you know, he didn't throw a pick till week seven. He, you know, had multiple touchdowns in all but three games prior to the bye. I think what really hurt Russell Wilson was a couple of frankly eggs after the by. He came back at Philly with only 9.5, at the Rams with 10.6, and then uh, the Arizona home game in Week 16, which was a lot of people's fantasy uh, championships, only 10.9 points. So again, it's it's hard to not put Russell Wilson into this conversation here. All right, Brian, thoughts? My thoughts are very similar to Dylan. I mean, I said Lamar Jackson, but... If I had to put a number two, I'm not going to put Russell. I love Russell Wilson, but again, we're going based on fantasy numbers. I'm going with my boy Dak. And I think, and and I think this is something that we're going to come back to in maybe at least for me on best draft value for Prescott. But again, single digits in three games and did have a much better season than a lot of people thought. Uh, definitely ended the season strong, week 17, four touchdowns. Uh, but that game against Philly. Week 16, okay. ag- again, People's Fantasy Championship week, only 11.3 points. Uh, and three straight weeks, excuse me, uh, five straight weeks from week 12 to week 16, only one week over 20 points. Mm, I don't know if I would necessarily put him up in that category, but to your point, did finish number two uh, in fantasy. Look, regardless of whether what your thoughts are about the individual I don't think, and I frankly don't see how we can keep out Lamar Jackson, how Lamar Jackson cannot be the best quarterback of the 2019 fantasy season. He is like a running back, 1,206 yards, seven touchdowns, only fumbled two times, which, shocking. Very good. And you know what else? Uh, Breeze, no fumbles on the year massive fumble in that loss to Minnesota. So ironic enough, that was his first fumble of the fumble at all. Not even just lost fumble, first fumble of the season. Correct. Drew Brees. But to be honest with you guys, I on I don't see how we all can't uh, on a points per game basis, six more points per game than an at the average person, nearly a hundred points before the next uh, quarterback, which uh, on an average per game basis was Deshaun Watson, and then on an overall is Dak Prescott. So 80 points more than Dak Prescott. I think we got to give this one to Lamar Jackson. Oh, there's here. no doubt about it. So, all right. So uh, I, I do agree with Tyler. Patrick Mahomes though, is a very great quarterback, and he's for fantasy. You have to. I would take Patrick Mahomes next season. Next season over Lamar Jackson in that case in a draft. I would then. Well, we all know how you feel about that, but let's hold that thought until we get to the top 20 players next next uh, for 2020, and then we can have that conversation. All right. We're going to move on. to So we're going to give the best quarterback of 2019 to Lamar Jackson. All right, moving on to running backs. Uh, the best running back of 2019. This time we'll start with Brian. Christian McCaffrey from the Carolina Panthers. I don't. I think this is sort of a, a similar it's, situation to Lamar Jackson. Have, yeah, I, I don't see how in the world you cannot put uh, McCaffrey up there. Nineteen total touchdowns. If you're playing in a PPR league, a hundred and sixteen catches and a thousand yards in both rushing and receiving. And what's interesting about McCaffrey, even though they were out of it at the end of the season, they still ran him hard even through week seventeen, which a lot of people were really concerned about. But the bottom line is he's averaging, you know, anywhere between eighteen to twenty touches a week. I guess the only question is, um, you know, only one week without double digits and in fact 
only two weeks with less than 20. I think that's pretty incredible. Um, my only concern, and I guess that was sort of the concern coming into this year, is can someone of McCaffrey's stature uh, maintain the numbers over a year? And we also have to consider the fact that Cam Newton really didn't play a whole lot this season, too. So they had three different quarterbacks, and he's still putting yeah. up those kind of numbers. I think the question moving forward, and of course we don't know the answer to this yet, who's the quarterback in Carolina next year? You know, could be maybe... Great question. Maybe it's Will Greer. Maybe it's Newton who's still under contract for a year. Maybe they draft a quarterback. Draft up for Tua. It's it's so you never know. And, and even if they do draft Tua, who's to say he's available? Exactly. Week one? Tua might... Well, who's to say he's going to be healthy yet, too? Because we exactly. have yet to see him throw. They're saying Tua might sit the whole season next year. Although he also just came out and said that he's going to work out for teams in April. So if I he's going to be ready to work out for teams in April, why wouldn't he be ready for August? That's very true. You're not wrong. So... Dylan, what's your thoughts here on the best running back? It's Christian McCaffrey. Uh, there's no way you can put anyone in terms of running back above him. And maybe in terms of top 20 players, you probably can't put anyone above him. And if it wasn't for Lamar Jackson's great year, I think Christian McCaffrey would be the unanimous MVP. But the way he put up 1,000 rushing yards, 1,000 receiving yards, you don't see that that often, especially from a running back. It's been a long time since it's happened before. I want to say, if I remember correctly, Roger Craig, the last person to go 1,000-1,000 back in the 80s. Yeah. I think, Tyler, we can agree that the, the running back is McCaffrey. McCaffrey aside, tell us someone else who was at least in your consideration here. I definitely think Alvin Kamara and Dalvin Cook would have been up there. Um, Kamara's injury really did mar him and lack of yeah, touchdowns. It did knock him down a little bit towards the end of the season, but I think overall he wasn't terrible. Well, man, how interesting is this? Here's here's the stat for you guys. Kamara did not go for over 100 yards rushing all season, did not go for over 100 yards receiving all season. Now, of course, all purpose, he was over 100 in many weeks. And again, only six touchdowns on the season, too. Um, is that fluky? If Breeze comes back next year, do you not still put Kamara in the first round? I think there's a lot of valid questions here, but... I'm going to have to disagree with you on Kamara. I would have I taken Aaron Jones over him. See, I'm not an Aaron Jones believer. And what's even more interesting about Aaron Jones is he had less than 300 touches on the year. Christian McCaffrey, over 400 touches. So that extra 100 touches, it, it really goes a long way. So, but yeah, I, I'm. Fantasy wise, how many touchdowns? Well, of course. But touchdowns, in my personal opinion, touchdowns seem a little bit more fluky than touches. You know, touchdowns, again, Kamara had, what, 18 touchdowns last year? And he probably had a similar, right, two years ago. He probably had a similar number of touches year over year, maybe not quite since of the uh, injury. Latavius Murray really... But he was the one that really looked good this year for them. You know, Brian, what's interesting about Murray is he li looked great when he was in there. But two years ago when it was Ingram and Kamara, both of them were fantasy viable. The Really, the only two weeks Murray was fantasy viable was when Kamara was out. And he put up huge numbers those two weeks. So I'm, I'm interested to see what they do going forward because I know Murray's going to be back. All right, I think we can give the fantasy running back of the year to Christian McCaffrey. Honorable mention, I would have to give Austin Eckler uh, with 92 catches for almost 1,000 yards in his own right, 11 touchdowns. I mean, he averaged 19.3 per game. And what's interesting about Eckler, guys, is I think a lot of people who had Eckler were picking him up early in the season because of Melvin Gordon. But when Gordon came back, he was equally as effective. And more interesting, only one week with less than double digits. Uh, ended the season with 16, 31, 13, 11, and 17. The end zone was the issue for him in weeks 15 and 16. No touchdowns. So honorable mention there to Eckler. Uh, before we move off running backs, what does San Diego do at running back? Gordon, free agent. Eckler, I guess, could be franchised, but he's currently also a free agent. Do both stay? Do both go? Does one or the other stay? I would imagine Gordon's probably on his way out. I agree with you on that one. Um, a lot of free agents this year for running back. They're thinking Le'Veon Belt might be back on that. Who knows with the Jets? Um, he's definitely on the trade block. But yeah. what are they going to get for him? Yeah. Um, again, there's there's some good people out there that they could be. Look, Derrick Henry's a free agent too. That's gonna be. I dare. I think he'll be staying in Tennessee. They are idiots if they don't yeah. either franchise him or sign him to a yeah. long term deal. So, Derrick Henry's going to get a big money deal. He deserves big money. I mean, especially with the way he's balling out in the playoffs right now. Yeah. 
I don't think Melvin Gordon did enough coming back to supplement him getting a big contract that he wants. I think Eckler, you can get, you can pay him less money and get better value for it. And I think that's what the Chargers will do. You know, Gordon, he averaged 15 points a game when he was in there. Um, certainly the end of the season helped. But some of these lines, like week 16 against Oakland, nine carries for 15 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, is he really going to get that big money deal? I, I can't see it. I mean, there's a couple teams out there that could probably use a, a running back like Gordon, but I, I don't know if that money is out there for those running backs this season like they were in previous off seasons. So, all right, Christian McCaffrey, the running back of the year. All right, now we are going to go to the wide receiver category. And, guys, I have a feeling that this one could be a clean sweep as well. I There's no doubt about that. The best receiver in the NFL this season, and in my opinion, last couple of seasons, is Michael Thomas from the Saints. That You can't deny that. A hundred, uh, actually 98 points in front of the number two wide receiver and four points per game above the next average wide receiver who, incidentally, Chris Godwin, which we can talk He's about. He's a good receiver, too. Later in the in the show, but he actually missed the last couple of weeks there as well. They were out of it, so I totally understand. But Michael Thomas setting a... Uh, uh, not only a franchise record, but setting an NFL record for receptions. What what are your thoughts here, Dylan? You've got a free agent in Drew Brees. You got a free agent in Teddy Bridgewater. You got a free agent in Taysom Hill. What do you see happening in New Orleans? I think honestly, Drew Brees isn't ready to retire yet. And if you're the the Saints, you got to bring back Drew Brees. He's if it wasn't for Tom Brady, I think Drew Brees would be the greatest quarterback of all time. Um, I know he only has like one Super Bowl. You know, they lost early in the playoffs this year. It sucks, but you got to bring Drew Brees back if it's for a year, for two years. But you also, in my opinion, you got to get Taysom Hill back. He brings more value. He, he can play any position on the offense besides the offensive line. He can return kicks. Reminds me a lot of Michael Vick when you used to play with Michael Vick on Madden. You put him <laughs> as your kick returner. That's what Taysom Hill can do. And you can have Drew Brees develop him as a quarterback. And who knows? In, in a couple of years, he could be like Lamar Jackson. I want to ask you an honest question, Miller, and this is, I know this is going to be a little different, but you were around for the prime of Peyton Manning. Who's better between him or Brees? Because when Dylan said he could be the greatest of all time. Statistically, it's obviously Manning. Manning holds almost every statistical record, uh, obviously, except touchdowns, which is now coming down to between Brees and Brady over the, you know, hopefully over the next year. Peyton Manning just he was so automatic every year it's really a, a tough a tough way to go about it now I will say that for a lot of Peyton Manning's career I, I didn't play fantasy so I probably wasn't as yeah. into some of the statistics but to be honest I think it's Drew Brees if you're okay. asking me prime of your career Peyton Manning prime of his career Drew Brees I'm going Drew Brees I, I I'm such a huge fan of his I'm you know I'm not a, a Saints fan by any means but I, I I'm I really think Breeze still has a, another two years left in the tank. Um, I, I, from what I understand, Bridgewater is actually open to staying on as the backup. Maybe sign him to a long-term deal. And that's going to be a guy down the line that you're going to want to be your coach. Very, I, very I, true. I, those type of people are the ones that you want on any type of staff. So I hope he comes back. All right. So, Dylan, Michael Thomas, are, are we agreeing on that? Yeah, 100%. And Tyler... Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas, definitely. I, I think it, it's it's a clean sweep here as well. Let's talk about beyond that. Um, and, and honestly, guys, here's the reason that I want to bring this up. Wide receiver behind Michael Thomas. So in a year that everybody said, you know, wide receiver is so deep. There's so many great people out there. You know, we wait on wide receiver, get that running back, get that quarterback in the first round. I, I couldn't disagree more. A down year for DeAndre Hopkins. It's tough to say somebody had a down year with 100 catches, but only 1165 and six. Julio Jones, 99 for 1394 and 6. Again, those are great numbers, but those are not Julio Jones numbers. Evans and Godwin both put up decent seasons. Even Devontae Adams didn't get to 1,000 yards. Cooper Cup, who had a great season, had a couple of really poor weeks, including a 0 against Pittsburgh and a 5-point effort in San Francisco. Um, Antonio Brown, 
probably will never play in the league again. Uh, a guy like Amari Cooper, who, again, 80 catches for over and almost 1,100 yards, but went in the last two Philly. weeks of the fantasy season, 2.9 and 6.4, a, a zero against New England and a 6.8 at Detroit. Um, it's it's tough to trust him. Brian, is Cooper, he's a free agent. Is he going to be with the team next year? I believe year? so, yeah. I mean, Dad Prescott's numbers were really inflated because of the presence of Amari Cooper. Um, I don't see him leaving. I mean, you gave up a first-round pick for him, so, I mean, you might as well just keep the man. And Byron Jones has pretty much said that he is looking to move on now, so it's not going to hurt to bring Amari Cooper back. You know, guys like T.Y. Hilton, who was a former fantasy stalwart, only uh, 500 yards. A guy like Odell Beckham, uh, a massive disappointment. Not his fault. So, And and I'm not saying that it is, but he's still probably going to be in that situation next year. Uh, I think, and, and I'm kind of alluding to what I'm going to get to once we get to our top 20 players. There's no wide receiver even in the neighborhood of Michael Thomas no, if there's Breeze not. comes back. DeAndre, I mean, he's a good player, but he's not. I have arguments with this a lot. Michael Thomas has DeAndre Hopkins beat. I mean, again, Tessons are a, that's a real big question mark when it comes to talking about an identity. I don't know if you guys agree with me on that, but they're just a strange team. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. you you have to be a strange team if you get up twenty four nothing on somebody and and lose, lose the game. Well, yeah. I I also didn't realize that apparently Bill O'Brien is their head coach and their GM. That's very interesting. Huh. I, that was something that was floated around online the other day. And, and that could be <laughs> honestly a team that could look at like when we were saying about Melvin Gordon, if he can if he, again again on the pricing range, Melvin Gordon maybe to Houston. Very interesting point. All right, so three clean sweeps we've had thus far. I think that from here on out, we might have a little bit more um, of difference here. Uh, We're going to move on to the best tight end of 2019, and I think, again, there's only a couple that are even in consideration. Um, Let's hear it. All right, the best tight end probably, I mean, people, again, can have their debates, but I, I put Travis Kelsey there. Travis Kelsey? And By far. This one's Kittle's, a lot. Kittle's good too, but Travis Kelsey's the man. This one's a lot closer uh, because in average points per game, Kelsey, Kittle, Ertz, Waller are all within about a point and a half of one another. Now, some of those people missed some games, and I guess if nothing else, you give Kelsey the nod here because he played. Um, but Kelsey has his up and down games, and I think what's interesting about Kelsey, and it's tough to say that after watching the playoff game when he scored three touchdowns, but I think what's interesting about the Chiefs, and, and Tyler, I'll ask you about this because you, you follow the team very closely. They have so many weapons between Mecole Hartman, Tyree Kill, even Damian Williams, McCoy. They've got so many weapons. Sometimes it seems like Kelsey kind of falls in between the cracks, and it's tough to say that, you know, number one tight end. But there will be some games that he's just not even on the radar. Well, yeah, and I definitely, like, Tyree Kill came out, I believe it was yesterday, and made the comment that, like, we have so many weapons on offense that it's hard for teams to cover everyone. So teams might double team Kelsey, but you're still going to have Hill, Watkins, Hardman. It's true. You really can't cover everybody on that offense. Are there any free agents? I know, again, McCoy probably won't be back. I think Damian Williams signed a two-year deal. I know Tyreek Hill's locked up. Watkins is locked up. Hardman's a rookie. Kelsey's locked up as well. Yeah, so, so. I mean, they're, they're bringing that nucleus back. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, there's been a lot of talks of, oh, how big is the contract extension going to be for Patrick Mahomes? But really, outside of that, I don't think there's too many free agents. They need to worry about their defense. I, I, Chris, think, I think Chris Jones is a free agent. He's one of the biggest ones. Yeah, that's but. Who was the guy that they got from, was it Seattle or San Francisco last? Was it? Do they have a guy named Clark on their team? Frank Clark, yeah, who they traded um, for from Seattle. Yeah, he, he signed an extension with them last yeah, year. Yeah, I like him. Yeah. I like Frank Clark. Dylan, what are your thoughts on the tight end? It's got to be Travis Kelsey. Um, I really like George Kittle a lot. I think he brings a lot of value to the 49ers, but Travis Kelsey, I mean, he's he's like Gronk in his prime. He just... You could you could double team him and he'll still somehow get open and catch the ball. I'm glad you brought up Gronk because uh, this is something that I, I want to reminisce with you. Uh, first of all, who was victorious in our fantasy league? I came in second place to uh, Cortez. 
Cortez Harris. Interesting. So nobody that was of the five people that are in the league of the ten, none of us won, which I think is interesting. Second place, I'll take it. You know, so Matthew Barry, who's obviously esteemed fantasy analyst, I follow on Twitter. Obviously, I got to meet him and, and I got to spend time with him at ESPN and I got to meet the whole crew and I got to go up for a taping of fantasy football now, which is one of the greatest experiences of my life. He put something out on Twitter that said, I want to see the biggest bonehead move that anybody made in fantasy. And I believe I've won. And I I actually, he, I was not featured in the column and I'm not sure why in our league. And I'm sure you guys saw this like week two, I dropped Lamar Jackson to pick up Gronk. So I dropped the overall fantasy MVP to pick up someone who didn't even play in the league this year. So I'll cop to that. That was when it was coming out that he was making some major announcement. My tight end in, in our league was horrible all year. I didn't have anybody good. I was I had Roethlisberger was my quarterback at the time. And Jackson, we're talking week two. Yeah, he had a couple of good games, but he didn't really get off to Lamar Jackson superstar till week yeah, four, week five. Yeah, because the first game was against Miami, and it's Miami at the time. So right. I understand where you're coming from. So um, looking back, I, I can only imagine if I would have just we, hung on. We did to talk Lamar about Jackson. that. I do remember talk. I think that was with Tyler or Parker. We talked about that. That was interesting. So uh, I, I did send that to him, and he did respond back. I was surprised somebody else dropped Lamar Jackson for like a kicker or something. Uh, but I was surprised he didn't put me on there. But I'm going to say Kelsey. Just I mean, it's hard not to. But I'm not gonna. I'm honestly. I'll take Kelsey, but Kittle is 1A, and I think the only reason he's not even in that conversation is he did miss two weeks. He missed a game against Seattle and Arizona Week 10 and 11, um, and but he did average just as much as um, some uh, as Travis Kelsey did. So something to keep on the radar, but again, same with Austin Hooper. Uh, again, Hooper had a huge season, really came out of nowhere, but did end up missing three three consecutive games and really the second half of the season he just didn't do a whole lot a couple of games with five uh ended the season with a 15 and an 11 uh somebody to keep on your radar though um unfortunately i think the falcons are i think they're done i i think that they're i think that they're done yeah i i see it too miller i really do i mean the, the defense just injuries are hurting that team and i mean matt ryan uh Good quarterback, but I mean, we'll see. He doesn't really have the best offensive line to protect for him either. So, so clean sweeps all the way. Quarterback Lamar Jackson, tight end Travis Kelsey, wide receiver Michael Thomas, running back Christian McCaffrey. We are going to move right along, and we are going to go next to comeback player of the year. This would be somebody who... Many people left for dead or uh, had a significant injury from last season. So I think that we might go a few different directions here. Uh, Let's start with Tyler. Tyler, who do you have for comeback player of the year? Uh, I took Jimmy Garoppolo from the 49ers. Interesting choice. Let's hear some reasons why. Well, I think a lot of people kind of questioned him after he was traded to the 49ers and then he got that big contract extension. So he was playing well last year before he got hurt, but then nobody, again, still nobody really knew what to expect from him coming back this year. But he was able to lead the team to 13 wins, and they picked up a playoff victory so far, so he hasn't looked too bad. I think that's very interesting about Garoppolo. My only pushback there is Garoppolo on the season came in at uh, quarterback 14. Uh, That's my only concern with Garoppolo there, but had a wonderful season nonetheless. Okay, so we have one vote for Jimmy G. Dylan? I also voted for Jimmy G. Um, I thought when I made this list that everyone would forget about Jimmy G being out last year. Um, And I was like, all right, I have a a good player to talk about. But come to think of it, Tyler picked Jimmy G as well. Um, And I'm just going to agree with everything Tyler said. I mean, when he signed that big contract as a backup quarterback, everyone was like, what's going on here? Like, what, they, they must have saw something that we didn't see, and now we look at it, and he's like Tom Brady's prodigy. Like, I, I always like Jimmy Grout. He's a good guy, good player. And, and I wonder if 
New England has some seller's remorse at this point, especially with the divisiveness that's going back and forth between Brady and the Patriots. Apparently, he sold his home in New England area and has moved. He's cleaned out his locker. He's cleaned out his suite. Apparently, he's got like his own suite at the game for like his family and, and friends. Um, cleaned that out, they said, unlike ever before. So I can't imagine personally seeing Brady with another team, but did the Patriots make a mistake by letting Jimmy G go. I, I guess it remains to be seen what happens with them, but that, I think that's uh, something interesting to come back to. Yeah. Brian? I didn't even know he was a former player, but I went with Waller because, I mean, I, I really had no clue who this guy was until this season. People said he was a, a player before. I just didn't know him, so I went with Waller. So let's talk about Waller. Uh, Waller had over 1,100 yards this season, did play, and actually, I and this I did not know, he played two seasons with the Ravens in 15 and 16, did not play in 17, and did play with Oakland in 2014, or excuse me, 2018, only 75 yards. He came out of nowhere. Exactly. That's and, what I'm saying. And I, I give you a lot of credit there for that pick. I think that's very interesting. And what's even more interesting is if you think about the top three next year will be the same as this year. Kelsey, Kittle, Ertz. Probably in that order. Though Waller's certainly up there. Mark Andrews is certainly up there. Uh, I think do, there's now a second tier of tight ends. You know who I honestly think could even reach that tier close to you, Miller? I think Goddard can be up there because, I mean... Yeah. They don't have anyone else. It's, and, I mean, it seems like uh, Carson Wentz loves targeting. He loves to target Dallas Goddard. I and have to tell you that if the Eagles do not get A.J. Green, there is a serious problem. They need to yeah. pay him whatever he wants because they. you saw what happened in the playoff game. I mean, yeah, they made the playoffs. They really struggled all season. Even if Deshaun Jackson's still under contract, so he'll be back. Jeffrey seems done. He's not. He. They said if he was to play next season, it wouldn't be till the halfway point of next year. Jackson. No, uh, Alshon Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, right there alone, in, in, as you've seen before, so they, they took a second-round pick with our Sega Whiteside, who never stepped up. I actually got him in a keeper league really late, like last round next to last round, and I tried to run him out there a couple of times when they didn't have anybody else. You know, he didn't have more than two catches in any game all year. You For know, second-round pick, that's that's awful. And he just couldn't get open. He couldn't have separation. He didn't well, didn't have the speed. Well, they need AJ Green. That's the problem with Eagles. They don't. They can't. That's their problem. They don't develop good receivers. I mean, Nelson Aguilar was a first round pick, and then and you could argue, yeah, he had did a he, terrible season. He, did, doesn't did he, he always have horrible seasons? Did he live up to a first round pick? Probably not. But to be honest, Aguilar had some big catches in the Super Bowl year. If they had it all over to do again, maybe they could have went with something else, somebody else. But it's really tough to live your life that way, that's for sure. So um, my comeback player of the year, I'm going to go with Devontae Parker. And I think that some of these numbers from Devontae Parker are going to absolutely blow your mind. This guy, talk about a first-round pick. Devontae Parker you know, has been a bust. And I think that that's literally the best way that you can say it. But Devontae Parker won a significant number of people, their leagues. I mean, when you look at 72 for 1202 and nine touchdowns, literally a guy you picked up off the scrap heap outside of a poor week against the Jets in week 14. Here's his last six weeks, 15, 35, four, 23, 22, 21. And that's, you know, the target numbers were just insane. I mean, you're looking at six double digit targets out of the last eight. And, you know, let's look, let's talk about the Dolphins for a minute. Say what you want about the Dolphins. You know, early on in the season, everybody was saying about, oh, we're, we're tanking for Tua and all. They went out and fought. Four, I mean, four wins, correct? They won, ended up winning five. Look at that. I have to thank them. They beat the Patriots, which allowed the Chiefs to gain that second seed in the AFC. So, East. yeah, be thankful, Tyler. Yep, that was huge. Here's my question. I think, so, so number one, they still could tank for Tua. They could probably get him with the five pick. They have three picks in the first round. Why wouldn't you take Tua? Now, obviously, you want to see what how, how his hip is. Bring Fitzpatrick back for another year. It's not his fault the games they lost. They they literally traded all their best players: Kenny Stills, Laramie Tunsil, Minka Fitzpatrick. I mean, they're trading. They're I mean, those are three of their best players right there. So and when you when you trade all those guys and you're still competitive in all of these games, he, Fitzpatrick still got it. Why wouldn't you bring him back? 
and play the first half of the season and then bring two in if he's ready to go. I mean, okay. maybe even sitting to a behind Fitzpatrick for well, yeah, a year could really I, be helpful. I, to, I like I said that that was the plan. Even though two is saying he's healthy, sit him a year, or even do what they uh, the Redskins did with Haskins. Three was it? You could say like most of the season it was Keenum or uh, McCoy. I think McCoy start a few games, then put Haskins in at the end of the year. Well, and and again the jury is still out on Haskins as well. Yeah. I mean, do they trade Haskins and try to oh, move no, out of that pick? No. And try, I don't know. The, I think the Redskins literally everything's on the table at this point. That could be a Melvin Gordon place. I think uh, first of all, uh, Peterson's still under contract for another year. They still have Geis. They can probably pick up a guy in the late round. They probably they do need someone to replace Chris Thompson. But interesting, Devontae Parker overall number eleven wide receiver for a guy that went undrafted. Even this is how crazy this is, guys. Even at the end of the season, Devontae Parker was still only rostered in eighty five percent of leagues. So basically, Devontae Parker went the entire season without being rostered in one hundred percent of leagues, which just is is insane to me with the you know the numbers that he put up this year. So my comeback player of the year goes to Devontae Parker. But if we're taking the consensus, we'll give it to Jimmy G. Jimmy G wins the fantasy football strategy guide, comeback player of the year. Can I just bring up one more thing? Of course. All right, so we were talking about Na- Nelson Aguilar. So mm-hmm. two receivers that were drafted way after him were uh Tyler Lockett in the third round, and then even uh Tyler can relate because, I mean, he was on the Chiefs, but Chris Conley was a part of that, too. So pretty solid players. Other players that aren't that position, um, guys like uh, uh, Devin Funchess was on there as a receiver, TJ Yeldon, and a good one, Landon Collins was on that. So Eagles. It's tough to say that. And, and, and again, I'm sure you could look at a bunch of people from this last draft that, oh goodness, that were, yeah. were better than our Sega White side. So, you know, it's not an exact science, too. You know, opportunity comes into it a lot as well, so... All right, next to last category before we get into our top 20 is the best draft value. Now, keeping in mind that this wouldn't necessarily apply to somebody like Devontae Parker because Devontae Parker was not drafted in leagues. So what we're looking for is late round draft picks who made the most of their opportunities. So I'm going to start off this time with Dylan. Dylan, best draft value. All right, so for this one, I'm going to go with Austin Eckler. Um, if you think about it, think of all the running backs that were drafted ahead of him. If you look at the McCaffreys, the Saquon Barkley, Dalvin Cook, Zeke, you could put Alvin Kamara up there. Eckler was drafted, I would say, pretty low for a running back, and he probably put up the best value out of all of them. To be perfectly honest with you, if you look at the people in the top 10 of average points, I'll read them in order. McCaffrey, Cook, Jones, Henry, Elliott, Eckler, Barkley, Kamara, Fournette, Ingram. He was drafted below every single one of those people. Now, while I probably say Austin Eckler was maybe, if I had to guess, fourth, fifth round, maybe sixth round, I I, I would absolutely have to give him at least in the conversation of a best draft value from Austin Eckler. Yeah, nice because pick. You, you, what are you going to lose with a sixth round pick? Like you can't screw up your first, second, and third round pick. Sixth round pick, you take someone you hope that they're going to put up decent numbers, but you never expect some them to put up Austin Eckler numbers from the sixth or seventh round. And the number four overall scoring running back in the league, only two points behind Zeke Elliott. So you're telling me you can get somebody with Zeke Elliott quality in the sixth round? I mean, that's how you win fantasy leagues is by making those types of picks. All right, I like it, Tyler. Best draft value. I went with Derrick Henry just because he was another pick who I think a lot of people overlooked. And with the numbers that he ended up putting up, you know, helping the Titans get to the playoffs, I think he's going to be a player that a lot of people, depending on what happens with him in free agency, but I think a lot of people will look to pick him in the early rounds of the fantasy drafts next year. I can't imagine that they don't franchise him. I just can't. Now, they probably should, as you, as we mentioned off air, sign him to a long term deal. However, I, if he is not in Tennessee next year, I would just be f- absolutely blown away. This not only the week seventeen game with two hundred eleven yards, three touchdowns, but certainly how he's played in the playoffs thus far. It's it's pretty impressive. Um, here's my, you know what? I have to be perfectly honest with you. I have never in my life 
had owned Derrick Henry on a fantasy team. I've never played him in DraftKings. And, you know, that's my own problem. You know why? He does not catch the ball out of the backfield. And when I play in a PPR league, I would rather have a Kamara than a Henry uh, or a McCaffrey than a Henry. But I think he's kind of changed that narrative this year because he puts up so many rushing yards and he gets so many touches. And honestly, he has been getting... A couple catches, uh, even in one game against Carolina, had three for 36 and a touchdown. So maybe they're throwing the ball out of the backfield. I'll tell you, Deion Lewis, what a major disappointment. Not that people were really drafted him a whole lot, but he just, it's almost like they don't even want to get him on the field. Well, no, I think when he fell off, that's what allowed Derrick Henry to step up and get recognized more. So Derrick Henry, comeback player of the year for Tyler. Next, we will go to Brian. Brian, who do you have for the, or excuse me, the best draft value? Miller, the uh, the one that you told me was, the one that you said we couldn't put was the one I put. So Devontae Parker was it. Um, the other person I put on there as a backup was mostly a free agent pickup in Tyler Higby. So, I mean, it was uh, kind of a difficult one, but I mean, Another guy I was even going to put uh, on my list was Raheem Mostert from San Francisco. I mean, he, all these guys. Uh, it was a, it was very tough. Uh, Dylan made a valid point with uh, with saying Austin Eckler. I mean, there's a lot of guys you could say. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I I'm lost. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> well, uh, and I appreciate your honesty there, my friend. I'll tell you what. This is one that I am. I'm really going to go out there on a limb with, and it's Jameis Winston. Famous Jameis. Listen, the guy, say what you want about him, 33 touchdowns, 5,100 yards, yes, the 30 picks, yes, the five fumbles, added 60 carries for 250 yards and another touchdown. I think that's something that a lot of people don't really consider. I heard he likes crab legs. I, I, I like winning national championships over Auburn too. <laughs> My point here is with Winston. He was a guy that every week it was just that. Yes, he had a bad week against Jacksonville, and even in the fantasy championship, the the eleven points. Uh, but I got to tell you, Jameis Winston barely drafted and if he was drafted he was drafted in the late rounds and to be honest with you coming in at quarterback five over people like the following patrick mahomes kyler murray aaron Rodgers, carson wentz matt ryan tom brady jared goff cousins in front of all of those people i mean to be able to get a starting quarterback in this league in the last round and next to last round put over 5,100 yards and 33 touchdowns. Say what you want. Jameis Winston is my best draft value. I got my best draft value. Aaron Jones from the Packers. And I think that that's fair as well, because certainly with the 16 touchdowns, uh, Aaron Jones finished uh, number two overall behind uh, Christian McCaffrey, and he was going, you know, round two, round three. But again, to get a number two overall running back, and, and maybe even slid down to round four in some leagues, but definitely in twelve team leagues, he he was going oh, in the top the 12, fifty. Yeah, top. He was going in the top fifty. So, but I do think that that's a very good selection. So we're a little all over the board here. One more person that I don't think a lot of people talked about, Nick Chubb. Uh, again, he finished in the top ten. He wasn't going high because of Kareem Hunt. Nick being Chubb there. ranked in ESPN at twenty five when you were on your draft lobby. He was twenty five. So that's kind of I think that's low for him. But okay. Well, what, yeah, when Kareem Hunt. Came came back that knocked his numbers down because Hunt did more of the ball catching in the backfield. Yes. Very true. And he his uh, receptions out of the backfield did struggle in week 16 and 17, 4 and 5, and actually coughed up the fantasy, or excuse me, the rushing title to Derrick Henry in week 17, was holding it all season. Uh, so up until that week 15, I think he was, was very strong. All right. That brings us to the final category before we get into our top 20, and that is fantasy MVP. And here are our potential selections, Lamar Jackson, Christian McCaffrey, Michael Thomas, or Travis Kelsey. So we have our number one quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end. I want you all to make the case for the fantasy MVP, and it doesn't just necessarily have to be total points. It should also be, you know, who is the person and that carried playoff teams to the victory. We'll start with Brian. I said McCaffrey from the Panthers again. Um, a thousand and a thousand. Uh, hasn't been done in a long time. Um, having a quarter, not having a solid quarterback all year long and getting a thousand yards 
on three quarterbacks, and two of them we've never heard of probably in our lifetime. Again, that's my case for Christian McCaffrey. Certainly in a PPR league, I don't think there's any debate. Even, you know, in fantasy, he most fantasy points by a long shot. Uh, you know, almost two points a game higher than even Lamar Jackson. Six points a game above Michael Thomas, and eight points a game above Dak Prescott. Certainly an interesting theory, Dylan. I chose Lamar Jackson. A lot of people in the beginning of the season were saying he's not a quarterback. He's not a quarterback. But yet he can throw just as many yards as all the other quarterbacks in the league. And when he has to, he can run. Like you said, he ran for, what, 1,200 yards? Not many running backs in the NFL even ran for 1,200 yards. And he's not even a running back. He's a quarterback. Not at all. And what's, here's what's most interesting to me about Jackson of his entire line. Yes, the 1,200 yards, just the 36 touchdowns. Only six interceptions. This was the, That was the area that I was actually the most surprised by. Because even a guy like Dak... 11 picks. Deshaun Watson, 12 picks. Of course, Jameis with 30 picks. But even a guy like Josh Allen, who you don't put on throwing a lot of interceptions, had nine. So I think that uh, I think the case definitely could be made for Lamar Jackson. We will come to Tyler. Tyler, your thoughts? I went with Lamar Jackson as well, but I do think next year it's going to be interesting because if you watched the Ravens games at all this year, the two games that they lost, they got behind early. And it happened with the Titans as well. So it forces Jackson to throw the ball more. Now next year, when teams have more tape on them and you know they're figuring out the read option a little bit, is he going to be able to put up the same numbers next year? I think that remains to be seen. Well, I think, and again, I'm not, what I'm about to say is by no means an, an indictment on Patrick Mahomes. But we had this exact same conversation last year with Mahomes. Mahomes put up 50-plus touchdowns and 5,000-plus yards, and he came down, back down to earth. Yes, was that injury-related? Yes, he missed two games and part of another game. So two and a half games, which we haven't talked about this. How incredible is it that he only missed two weeks with a dislocated kneecap? I mean, they were talking up front six weeks. Well, to be fair, with Mahomes coming back down to earth a little bit this year, the team still won. They won the division, won 12 games, got back to the playoffs. Will Lamar Jackson be able to do that next year? I think that's what remains to be seen. I think they'll win that division again. I mean, that, that division's pretty weak, if we're not going to lie. I mean, I don't think anybody thinks Pittsburgh's ever going to be back to where they were. Um, you, you let all of your great players walk out of town and, and, you know, behind Roethlisberger. And who knows what Big Ben has? I mean, he literally had basically Tommy John surgery. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily what they're calling it, but that's basically what happened to Roethlisberger. So I think it's... Yes, their defense was good. They Connor can't stay healthy, and you know the Browns are not going to take the next step. I don't care who is their new coach, Kevin Stefanski or whoever. You know the Browns are terrible. Mayfield's. I don't want to say god awful because you know sometimes he'll look good, sometimes he won't. But I think the Ravens guys. I think they're going to be in charge of this division for the foreseeable future, unless of course Joe Burrow comes out and is the real deal because he seems like he's going to be a Bengal at this point. Twenty five year old rookie. I mean, wow. Well, that's very that that's a, an important point. So we'll see what happens. Um, maybe does AJ Green and leave town? I mean, I know he's got some issues with the Bengals, but hey, Joe Burrow, AJ Green, only a couple years left. Remains to be seen. I'm going to go in a different direction, gentlemen. And this is going to sort of segue into uh, my conversation that I'm about to have. If you're going to say Michael Thomas, it's okay. I'm taking Michael Thomas. Uh, I've been saying Michael Thomas all season. And here is why. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier. Wide receiver as a whole is down big time. Yes, there's the DeAndre Hopkins and the Julio Jones of the world, and those people could make a step back up to their previous glory. But to be honest with you, there is nobody in the NFL that is as automatic as Michael Thomas. In all 16 weeks of the fantasy season, most teams take off week 17. He scored double digits in every game and only four games under 20. That is incredible. Um, To me, if Drew Brees comes back, Michael Thomas has got to be the fantasy MVP. Again, is it difficult to go against Lamar Jackson and Christian McCaffrey in this season? Yes. But I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm not only going to take Michael Thomas as our fantasy MVP. We will give it to Lamar Jackson because he did win the vote. Uh, So Lamar Jackson takes our fantasy MVP. But for me, I'm going to go Michael Thomas and, guys, the segue. 
I'm also going to take Michael Thomas number one overall next year. If I have the number one overall pick, I will have Michael Thomas, and I am not taking anybody else except him. He is that automatic. He is so much better than the, the number two wide receiver if Breeze comes back. Now, before we get into our conversation about the top 20 overall players, I do want to point out that obviously we have very little to no insight about offseason moves, free agency, the draft, if Tom Brady and uh, Drew Brees and Philip Rivers, where they all end up if they come back. So obviously we are going simply here in January with very, very little to go on. With that said, if I have the number one draft pick right now for next season, and actually, you know, there's actually a trend in fantasy football to have the draft for your future season the day after the Super Bowl, which doesn't, it sounds kind of odd, right? Like, why would you do that? You'd want to see the preseason. You'd want to see where people go. But actually, if you ask me, I think there's a little bit more strategy in that. I do it the day before uh, the season starts because then with injuries and all that. Well, that's when a lot of people do it. But at the same time. No, it's pretty cool. Why not? So, yeah, I mean, maybe just a different wrinkle on uh, fantasy football. All right, gentlemen. Uh, So just a quick recap. Obviously, best quarterback, Lamar Jackson. Best wide receiver, Michael Thomas. Best running back, Christian McCaffrey. Best tight end, Travis Kelsey. We were kind of all over the place on the best draft value, uh, but the comeback player of the year went to Jimmy Garoppolo, and the fantasy MVP goes to Lamar Jackson. All right. We've got about 10 minutes here, gentlemen. So what I want to do is spend some time going over our top 20 players in 2020 so if we were doing a draft today for 2020 how would you how would you pick all right thomas one no all right don't said no sorry right. let's let's go top three for right now right, let's cool. let's start with that and then we'll go from there all right. right i had thomas mccaffrey and i put zeke at three i took thomas mccaffrey and lamar jackson i took mccaffrey lamar jackson and michael thomas so did i i took the same three mccaffrey uh jackson and thomas so it looks like outside of Brian, all three of us, at least in the top three, have Thomas, McCaffrey, Jackson. Um, for me, I have Zeke down at six, so he's still reasonably toward the top. Um, let's hear. Let's go the rest of your top ten here, Brian. Uh, four, I put Barkley. Uh, five, Patrick Mahomes. Six, then Lamar Jackson. Seven, I put Derrick Henry. Eight, Aaron Jones. Nine, I put George Kittle in my top ten. And then number ten, DeAndre Hopkins. Interesting. Dylan? Uh, number four, I took uh, Saquon Barkley. Uh, number five, Dalvin Cook. Six, I took Zeke. Seven, I took Alvin Kamara. Eight, I would take Derrick Henry. Uh, I have a repeat. I have nine. I have Dalvin Cook. And then uh, You're going to draft him twice? Yeah. And then ten, I have Tyreek Hill. Interesting. I didn't have Hill crack my top 20, but I, you certainly could make the case for that. And as a matter of fact, that speaks to my Michael Thomas being so much better than others. I only actually have two other wide, three other wide receivers in my top 20. Tyler? So considering this for next year at four, I took Derrick Henry. Uh, five, I took Russell Wilson. Six, I took Alvin Kamara. Seven, I took Tyree Kill. Eight, I took Zeke Elliott. Nine, I took Dalvin Cook, and ten, I took Patrick Mahomes. So it sounds like we're all kind of along the same page. I have Barkley at four, Henry at five, Zeke at six, Kamara at seven. I've got DeAndre Hopkins at eight, Julio Jones at nine, and then Patrick Mahomes at ten. So I think that there's really, we're kind of on the same page, but for you all, it seems like outside of Michael Thomas, no one else had a wide receiver other than Tyree Kill in the top 10. Um, you don't think that Hopkins or Jones I, belongs in the top 10? I put Hopkins in mine, but I didn't put Julio in it. I, I think he can come, make a comeback next year, but I, I'm, Calvin Ridley, I look to make a yeah. huge leap next year. All right, let's go the back half of the top 10. This is where I think it could get interesting. Yeah. Brian? I put Chubb at 12. Uh, 13, I put Julio. 14, I know, I'm pretty positive no one has him. Uh, depends if Jameis Winston comes back, but I put Chris Godwin. Um, Adam Thielen, Dalvin, Juju, I put Juju to come back. Travis, Tyree Kill, then Eckler made it. Okay. Um, Dylan? Number 11, I have Aaron Jones. 12, I have Chris Godwin. 13, I have Julio Jones. 14, I have DeAndre Hopkins. 15, I have Devontae Adams. 
16, I have Travis Kelsey. 17, I have Nick Chubb. 18, Joe Mixon. 19, Mike Evans. And 20, I have Josh Jacobs. And then at 21, I have A.J. Green. Interesting. And I'm actually wow. going to be really fascinated to see, number one, where A.J. Green goes goes yeah. and and with having a whole year off does that necessarily make him better uh d- does he come back to the same level maybe if he goes to a team like the eagles does having a better quarterback make him better i think aj it's, green it was crazy when aj green was just labeled as like he'll be back week one or week two he was ranked 76th i think initially there there were, we kind of knew that he was going to miss the first couple weeks yeah but but 76. Well, he ended up missing the whole season all right, um, Tyler, back half of your top 20. So number 11, I took Drew Brees. Number 12, I took Travis Kelsey. Number 13, I took Dak Prescott. Number 14, I took Saquon Barkley. Number 15, I took George Kittle. 16, I took Chris Godwin. 17, I took DeAndre Hopkins. Number 18, I took a name yet that nobody's really talked about, but uh, Leonard Fournette. 19, I took Devontae Parker. And 20, I took Austin Eckler. Devontae Parker getting in there, top it's of, 20. That's a lot of quarterbacks. Here's Saquon Barkley, 14. Why? Well, because he had an injury year this year, and we still don't know what the Giants are, really. They don't have much of an offensive line. I like Barkley, but I just don't know if he's going to be able to stay consistent on such a losing team. I think that that's extremely valid. In fact, I would argue, now I, I don't necessarily have this in here, but depending on what happens in the offseason, I would consider somebody like Chubb or you, you know, certainly Dalvin Cook. Um, Dalvin Cook injury prone. Barkley seems rather, rather injury prone. I mean, other than, you know, Barkley only really had four big weeks. Yes, the, the big weeks were huge. 43.9 in the fantasy playoff championship week in week 16 at the Washington Redskins. Um, but I, I was a little disappointed. You know, he only had uh, two weeks over five catches, which is really where I thought Barkley could make up a lot of points in a PPR league. All right, back half of mine. Chris Godwin, Eckler, Dalvin Cook, Chubb, Travis Kelsey, Ingram, Mark Ingram, who no one had mentioned, Keenan Allen, who I'm still very high on. I actually, uh, and the reason that I put Keenan Allen here, I don't believe Philip Rivers is coming back. You know the rumors that I'm hearing about who the next quarterback might be in San Diego. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Could you imagine Tom Brady on that team? Not to say he'd be a huge upgrade, but I'll tell you what. He's not had a receiver like Keenan Allen, a Gronk, of course, but a wide receiver since Randy Moss. Um, here's another one I didn't hear much of. Joe Mixon, I think with Burrow. So here, you know what? Hear me out, Brian. Joe Mixon, yes. Did he have a good season? No. Was he a fantasy bust? Could you argue? Yes. However, if you look at the last couple of season, or excuse me, the last couple of weeks of the season, you want to talk about a guy who could have won you your fantasy playoffs. Double, yeah. double digits in, f- in four of the last, excuse me, Four of the last five and thirty in week seventeen. Uh, you know, sounds with, like sounds like Brashad Perriman with Joe Burrow. I think Mixon gets it going. I yeah. think Mixon could is certainly a top ten but, running back. At you this know, point. their problem is their line. You know that too, and and hopefully they. They address that. I, I honestly would like to see Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. It's a homecoming for I, the guy. I think it'll be interesting. Yeah. 19, I have Russell Wilson. And here's one that no one mentioned. Um, number 20, Miles Sanders from could, the Eagles. That could happen. And I do agree. again, Sproles retires. Who knows? Ajayi's what, gone. Ajayi's gone. Who what, knows what happens to Jordan, Jordan Howard? Howard yeah. He's a free agent. The Eagles got some serious problems they need to address in this offseason, both at wide receiver and at running back. And not only that, Carson Wentz. Is he the is he the answer? He's Did a, they might make the right decision between the, him and Nick Foles? He's the third best quarterback in that draft class, man. Well, and it's it's uh, it's unfortunate. Can can I, can I just mention something quick? Of course. Last year at this time, we were talking about the the best player in the NFL was Todd Gurley, and no one put him in his top twenty this year. What happened to Todd Gurley? You know, I arthritis. I don't think it's necessarily Gurley's fault. I think it's the Rams' fault. I think that. Th- you know, the weeks that Gurley actually had the ball, he put up some seriously good numbers. But to be honest with you, you know, he was finished just above, he finished only 
two points better than Miles Sanders, who didn't even start the season as the starting running back. I mean, the he had only 20 carries on three different occasions, really wasn't catching the ball out of the backfield. Dylan didn't even have a thousand yards on the season and only missed one game. Uh, for whatever reason, the Rams offense this year just did not come back. Gurley, he got vultured at the, the end zone several times by a couple of dude from Daryl Henderson. Is he in the, I think he's definitely in top ten running back. He's right in that general area. But he was going there this year. I mean, he was back half of the first round, front half of the second round, even this season. And now that we see what's happened, I, I'd rather go with a guy with more upside like Miles Sanders. So in like the third or fourth round, if Gurley's available, would you take him? Of course. I mean, I don't think there's any argument. Fourth round pick, Espe- yeah. Especially if I've taken Michael Thomas. You know, if I have Michael Thomas on one side, come back to Miles Sanders, would I come back to Gurley for mid-30s yeah. in, in the third round in a 12-team league? Absolutely. Um, so, And that's the thing. I really think after this season, I'm changing up my total draft strategy. For me, it's always been take a running back up front. Or- Oh, running back over is it? Okay. Almost always in my first two picks, I'm I'm getting certainly at least one running back. So if I would take a Julio or a Hopkins or a Michael Thomas, I'm coming right back with a running back. You know what? I'm waiting. I think running back is going to be the deep position next year, and I'm telling you, that's why I'm going to go, unless something catastrophic happens like an injury in the offseason or Drew Brees not coming back, I'm doing everything I can to get Michael Thomas uh, in the first round. Uh, And if I can't get him, I'm probably going to end up taking a Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes and roll the dice on running back because I think that running back is going to be so deep next year. A lot of rookies coming in, a lot of uh, excellent young uh, players coming up. And again, maybe you find a value from a guy like, you know, Dalvin Cook or or Gurley next season. So, gentlemen... I got to tell you, this has been so much fun. And, you know, I I certainly hope that this isn't the last time that you are all on this podcast. Uh, Tyler, I know that you'll be here through the summer, so we can at least have you back. And and I do want to point out Parker Rose, who's been on every single episode for the past two seasons, unfortunately couldn't be here today due to a death in the family. So we all really care and support Parker, and and we appreciate his contributions to uh, the Fantasy Football Strategy Guide. That being said, uh, I certainly hope that, uh, certainly, number one, wish you an amazing graduation and and future career, Dylan. And Brian, you're in your last term here, so if you are, if either of you are back next year, you'll be coming down and and making a special trip to be here. Uh, We certainly want you back. You're welcome to be back. Um, But if this is your last uh, foray on the Fantasy Football Strategy Guide, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for for making this what it is over the past three seasons. It's been fun. It's been it's been a pleasure. It's the pleasure's mine. That's awesome, and I appreciate you being here today, sir. I mean, we started this, Miller. Me, you, and good old Ian. We we started this. Just the three of us down here, and uh, the, the person that wanted to pick Carson Wentz first overall in a draft. Cannot forget. You that. have no idea. Like some of my friends listen to this, and they I will never forget one of my really good friends who's a really good fantasy player. He's like, who is this guy that is taking, on this show taking Carson Wentz I'm, first overall? I just remember walking into your class, and it's just like. Ian going, yeah, man, we want to start a fantasy thing going on down here. And I was like, yeah, that'd be, that'd be nice. And I mean, now look where we're at. We're three years later. I think that this is something that I really hope that we can continue to do. Uh, if it is possible, you know, in the future to, to have you guys down or even if you want to meet here on a weekend or something, we can do that. Uh, I just hope that the fantasy football strategy guide continues into our fourth and, and season and bond beyond. And you're certainly welcome anytime to come down to the show and, and talk a little fantasy football you got it my friend thank you sounds good I'll, I'll try my best to be back all right and tyler hopefully we'll have you as nightly news president for another two terms after this one and certainly hope that you're, you're going to be the stalwart my, myself you and parker uh going forward and unless the guys want to come back so it's it's a pleasure that you were be able to get involved uh this season well i appreciate you guys having me on and asking me to be a part of it but uh like you said i'll be here through september so i don't see why i wouldn't be able to be a part of this next year cool thank you all right well that's going to do it for our final edition of the season three uh fantasy football strategy guide for tyler coleman dylan kleintop and brian christiana this is professor paul miller and we will see you again in august for the draft preview for 2020 until Until then, we'll see you again next time.
You can't forget